Swimming is complicated if you're a tiny organism. Microorganisms like bacteria or algae experience entirely different physical rules than larger creatures. Swimming is a competition between inertial forces, which tend to keep the speed of moving objects, and viscous forces, which resist motion and slow things down. Physicists describe this competition by the Navier-Stokes equation, where the left-hand side represents inertial forces and the right-hand side represents viscous forces. From this equation, we can define the so-called Reynolds number, which directly compares the two types of forces. The Reynolds number depends on the swimmer's size, speed and the fluid's viscosity. Larger organisms, like a 5 cm fish swimming in water at 5 cm per second, have a higher Reynolds number. This means that inertial forces play a big role. A single fin flap can propel the fish a considerable distance. In contrast, a tiny bacterium with a length of a micrometer and swimming also in a watery environment at a speed of 10 micrometers per second has a Reynolds number of just 0.00001. In this case, viscous forces dominate, and the moment the bacterium stops moving, it halts immediately. So the bacterium can take a break. If that wasn't enough, in this microscopic world, the Navier-Stokes equation becomes time-independent. The consequence is encapsulated in the scallop theorem. Consider a scallop at low Reynolds that opens and closes its shell to swim in water. Opening the shell might push the scallop slightly forward, but as soon as it closes, the scallop traces back the same path and ends up in the exact same spot. Overall, the scallop doesn't move at all. But we know that tiny organisms are pretty good swimmers. How do they deal with this challenge then? The trick is that microorganisms make non-reciprocal movements, patterns that do not simply reverse. Take the bacterium E. coli as an example. This intestinal bacterium swims by coordinating the rotation of helical flagella, tail-like structures powered by motors. When the motors rotate in the same direction, the flagella form a helical bundle that drives E. coli through the fluid like a corkscrew. Now we have seen how these organisms propel, but how do they navigate the environment to find food or escape danger? E. coli have evolved a strategy called run and tumble to change their swimming direction. Here is how it works. At some random point in time, one of the motors starts spinning in the opposite direction and their flagella bundle dissolves. This causes the bacterium to tumble and change direction. When the flagella bundle again, the E. coli starts moving along a new direction. At large scales, this motion looks like a random walk. Interestingly, E. coli tuned the frequency of the tumbling based on environmental cues, allowing it to move towards food or away from harm, an essential survival strategy. This is just one example where physics helps us understand the swimming of tiny organisms.